What's up, guys? Elijah Shadley here, owner and supervising broker of Venue Real Estate, and welcome to episode two of the V3 Summit podcast. I launched my first episode two weeks ago, and it feels so good to step out into my heart's passion. You know how when you get out on a hike, I don't know, maybe this doesn't happen for you, but for me, when I first start out, my heart rate always kicks way up, my breathing gets irregular, and my legs feel super tight. It usually doesn't last. It's usually just the first 100, 200 yards out from the trailhead ah oh, but then my heart rate settles in breathing regulates and then the climb starts feeling good and that's what this last two weeks have felt like for me it's it's been super encouraging getting feedback from out in the community you can you can push yourself a lot harder in a climb if you know that you're connected with others to belay you from below. Shout out to my peeps. You guys know who you are. I can't thank you enough for how you touch my life. I, I made a risky move. I made my video and said, watch me. <laughs> and you said, climb on. If you haven't heard the first episode, I'll link it up above and I deep dive a bit more into the vision and purpose, but I'm going to be affirming and reaffirming vision here in these first episodes as we're getting out, started out in this climb together. V3 stands for venue vision video and, and the summit is in regards to the fingerprint graphic in my company's branding. I, I like to think of fingerprints as a topographical map. That's the calling card of identity that we leave in the lives of others. Hold on. <laughs> it's going to make sense in just a second. On a topographical map, that little swirl that's in the middle of your fingerprint would represent a mountain peak or summit. And its context in your fingerprint means that this elevated place is unique to your identity. This, this peak, this summit, it represents the unique gifts, talents, and resource of your person that stands out from all of the people in the world. <laughs> You're the only person with your unique fingerprints. It's so awesome. Now out of this, I believe that every single person has the privilege of serving those around them with their elevated gift mix and skill set in order to release accelerated momentum in the success of others. When we, when we touch the lives of others, like we leave our fingerprints at the scene of the climb. <laughs> you see what I did there? Our fingerprints our touch in their lives testifies to us serving to elevate others in their unique identity and destiny. Now, this may be super confusing or complex to you, but here's the deal. We all know what this is like experientially. Think about the people that may have only touched your life one time in a meaningful way, and they may not even know you or that they touched you. I mean, I think about that one teacher coach, parent, friend, totally random stranger in an airport who touched your life with the resource of their person and you still know who they are to this very day and what they did for you, right? Like I, I know exactly who the people are watching this video right now that touched my life by encouraging me after they watched my first video. There's evidence of their identity at the scene of my climb in summiting out and my life's ability to serve others. If you're not familiar with, with climbing culture, when you know that you're about ready to make a risky move, you call out, watch me. <laughs> and if you're belaying someone and you want the climber to know that you're paying attention and that you're ready on the rope, you say, climb on. I'm connected with my community and, and they have both hands on my rope. Not, not feeding me line to hang myself, but to catch me if I fall and encouraging me not to stop climbing. There, there are numerous, numerous, numerous fingerprints at the scene of my climb. And the gift of the evidence is leading to increased conviction in my movement towards my summit. You know what I'm talking about. You know who these people are in your life. Now, when we know who we are and the resource that we carry, and whose we are, who we share these resources with and are appreciated by, we belong. And when we know that we belong, we're not afraid of letting go of our past, or our last stable handhold, or pressing into an unknown future, reaching out for that next hold, because our confident treasure is in the people that we know who are with us and will take care of us. If you wanna hear a bit more about this, again, check out episode one. 
But in that episode, I mentioned that there were a number of people that told me not to step out in the vision that I have for business and how I long to serve the community here in Bozeman. Their insight was that if I did, my phone would stop ringing, I'd ruin my business reputation here in Bozeman, and I wouldn't be able to recover. Now, my generous assumption for them in this advice is that they aren't wrong in the fact that my vision certainly charts a course into increased risk. My passion in life is oriented to seeing every single person that I, I come into contact with thrive in who they are. And this is certainly st- stormy waters to say the least. That's what's causing the rocking in the Bozeman community in this adaptive season. The two main issues seen as problematic in my vision were my desire to see the growing diversity of Bozeman's culture harmonized and to live out of the full integrity of my life as a child of God. Now, the insights that I receive is that both of these goals are so incredibly volatile that that no one would want to do business with me if I proactively lived out of this vision in community. The first is the easiest one to tackle in that in business, it's essential to establish who your target market is. Who your niche is defines what your messaging is going to be in order to attract that, that specific bandwidth of the market. The thinking goes, if you shoot for every target, you won't hit any of them. Uh, This is a huge problem for me to rectify in my heart and mind, because like I said, my passion in life is to see every single person that I come in contact with thrive within a place of belonging. And, And at its core within real estate, this is defined as helping guide people into a home. The case was made that if I tried to serve people moving to the area to help them belong, locals would resent this and then stop doing business with me because I'd be seen as the person serving to further dilute and destroy what they have enjoyed. On the other hand, if I defined locals specifically as my niche market, those moving to the area wouldn't resonate with my company messaging, and this would hurt my market relevance there. If I sought to serve wealthy people in luxury markets, this would alienate people looking for affordable housing. If I sought to advocate for people needing affordable housing, this wouldn't resonate with people who value exclusivity and prestige. Now, that is an absolute cluster of complexity to solve, ain't it? That's why most business plans default to one of these market contexts because the complexity of serving all of these different categories presents way too many problems and doesn't present enough opportunities. It makes sense, right? I mean, it's textbook business analysis. And hence why I received the input that I did. And I understand the problem defined by this thought process. Here's the thing about entrepreneurs and Pioneers of thought, though, they hate boundaries and limitations, especially, especially where they're connected to a dream of transformative innovation that solves impossible problems that improves people's quality of life. With all innovation, the best solutions are the simplest. My target market is Bozemanites. <laughs> That's my niche market because this is where my passion and product align. We, we have Bozemanites with billions and Bozemanites who are working two jobs to make ends meet. We have Bozemanites who've been here for seven generations. Bozemanites that have been here for seven days. Bozemanites who employ people and who are employed. Bozemanites who are growing in their place of belonging in this culture and those who can impart it through the identity of embodied identity. This is a singularity. It's one target, one market, and one message. If you're a Bozemanite, someone who resonates with the pioneering heart of living as an integrated community to overcome the impossible and establish thriving within new frontiers, bam, then you're who I'm looking to partner in business with. (laughs) Here's the good news and why I'm so hopeful in my vision. I've boiled my niche market down to two kinds of people. Those who love my vision and resonate with it and those who will. (laughs) Did you think I was going to exclude some people? (laughs) I can't. No, staying on brand 
which is just another way of saying telling people who you are on a public platform and why you're alive is absolutely vital for success in business and in life. I, I can't say I want to see everyone thrive, but then say, but not for this demographic. <laughs> that would be absolutely double-minded. Double-mindedness, it leads to instability in everything that we do. This is why people get themselves into trouble and lose their reputations in business, right? They, they, they market themselves as one thing in public by virtue signaling, telling people what they want to hear in order to get their business, but then they get caught in a lack of integrity by trying to live out of a different identity and set of values behind closed doors, which leads to my second value in business. The highest thing that you can know about me and my identity, why I'm alive, is that I'm a child of God. Business, it's a process of refining and defining. It's a crucible that will grind the rough edges off of your life to help better empower you to fit within your place of belonging in society, or it'll grind you to a pulp. <laughs> Either way, the daily grind is going to have its good work in you one way or the other. Now, a lesson that business has taught me, how it's refined and defined me, is that I couldn't have been any further off brand previous to this point in my life as a believer if I'd tried. I could have hired an entire marketing team to do a better job, and they couldn't have. <laughs> do you remember what I just said about business reputation? Business owners get themselves into trouble by marketing themselves one way, telling people who they are in a public sector, but then get caught trying to live out a different identity behind closed doors. As I've engaged the daily grind of business, what I've been confronted with is that this has defined my life as a believer. I, I tell people who I am in a public forum, in a public platform, why I'm alive, and then I tend to live a different way behind closed doors, which are called the doors of the sanctuary of my church where it meets. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Is I have no idea why I haven't recognized this double-mindedness in myself for years. Here's why I'm so compelled to press into this transparency in my marketing and messaging. One, the double-mindedness has been leading to instability in my life. And the final two, which, which are the main points, is that my lack of integrity is multiplying the problems here in Bozeman. And it dishonors the culture that I'm a part of. Jesus is the greatest leader that I've ever encouraged in my life, and, and I engage a day-by-day -day discovery of how to live more like him. He's infinite in his person, so I have plenty of bandwidth to wake up every day just as motivated and excited as the day before to discover more of who I am in him. Because even if I cut infinity in half, I still still have infinity left to go. So it keeps me driving forward every day with passion and gives me plenty of hope for a better life than the way I experienced yesterday, which was the best day of my entire life, which often challenges me in how to imagine a better one in today. The more that I've considered this, the biggest difficulty, and this is going to, oh, it's going to sound so strange. The, the biggest difficulty that my counselors were tripling over and saying not to live out of my life's vision is that celebrating others is dangerous. That's what my heart is. I want to see every single person that I come into contact with thrive in their identity, destiny, desires, and dreams. Again, this is going to sound super strange, but the things that create the most insecurity and instability within these times of change are delightful, pleasurable things. Now, here, here's a thought exercise to highlight this for you. If you fell into a pit of tigers, you'd probably experience some fear, right? Maybe not if you're a Bozemanite. You might not. Probably would. But here's the thing. You're not afraid of the tigers. You're, you're afraid of losing your life, which is kind of useful for, I don't know, like staying alive, <laughs> staying alive, staying alive. So the thing that you would fear in this situation would be losing something enjoyable, something necessary to your life, not the tigers. 
the people who have lived here for years and years and, and have loved the culture that has pervaded Bozeman are slowly watching it fade as it irresistibly changes and grows into the future. It's something that they've loved and enjoyed for years is fading. And the thought of celebrating people moving into the area, inviting them into belonging, and then giving them the gift of understanding is oftentimes next to impossible for them to consider. It, the difficulty is twofold in its difficulty. One, there's, there's an ease of interacting within the familiar that requires less effort. And the strangers who, who are moving here have strange desires, which are more correctly understood as different. And likewise, people who transition into our area while being culturally shaped by the environments that they left how hard time not interacting with Bozeman in the same way that they did in their previous culture. And, and those who have moved here with a longing for belonging, they feel like they have to look over both shoulders before confessing where they're from, just as a result of not having been born here. Now, the thing that I celebrate and what gives me so much hope is that the leadership principles I've learned from Jesus are perfectly suited to speak to our deep issues as a community. Now, to think, think about Jesus' reality. He had enjoyed the culture of heaven for all time and eternity and chose to step out of it through the proactive exercise of his freedom to pursue a relationship with me, the guy who had violated the culture of heaven interrupted God's right of being pleased perfectly and had, had made a huge mess of things. And if there has been anyone <laughs> in all of time and eternity who had the perfect right to stay isolated behind closed doors and talk bad about me, and, and not just in a spurious or slanderous way, anything bad that Jesus would have had to say about me would have been absolutely true. So if there was anyone who could have had nothing to do with me while demanding that I get my crap together before I was allowed to interact with them, it was Jesus. <laughs> However, instead of exercising his free right to do so without any wrongdoing, no one could accuse him of that. Instead, he emptied himself of this right and entered my life situation to demonstrate the grace of his desire to want to be with me. And then, after that, not only did he give me the gift of knowing that he understood me, crazy, <laughs> where I came from and why I behaved the way I did in trying to interact with him, but he gifted me his life and culture and declared that I could do greater things than him and that he wanted to serve me to accomplish this, clear up to and including the point of him dying to get it done. <laughs> It's crazy. The fingerprints of Jesus' life, they're all over the scene of my climb and my crime. But he's tethered my life to his regardless, and he's shouting, I'm watching, Elijah. Climb on. You've got this. I celebrate that your summit in good works here on the earth will be the same as mine and greater. I'm not threatened by your success or your belonging within my family. I celebrate you, and I'm here to ensure that you succeed in the good works destined for you to do. The fingerprints of Jesus' life are the same as mine, and they're the same as yours, and the revelation of unique identity. He's the only one who has the particular sum of skills and gifts unique to his person, but... He demonstrated that the confidence of his privilege to having sole access to the quality with God is what empowered him to step out of it to serve those who didn't deserve it, like me. <laughs> if we wait to celebrate others and serve them until they deserve it, we never will. If Jesus lived like I often do with other people, no one would have any belonging in heaven. We'd all be going to hell in a hands basket. Jesus didn't market himself on earth and then live another way behind the closed doors of the throne room of heaven. Absolutely not. He opened the doors, 
came out to us in joy, carrying peace, lived like heaven with us, even while I was living like hell, and invited us all to live with him in the fullness of his culture embodied in his very person. I didn't have a place there to be with him, but the guy is so stinking generous and kind that he's making a place for me to be there with him. There was no place for me in heaven. But Jesus said, there's no place for you in heaven, Elijah, but I'll make a place for you. I'm compelled by innovative vision that I'll kill myself for to birth a solution within the impossible that will drastically improve your quality of life. This is what it means to live on brand with heaven's culture. Setting aside your rightful privilege to gift people with empathetic understanding so they can live with you as one who confidently belongs with you in your home culture. If there's no place for you to belong, then by heaven, I will make you one. Consider, consider the societal principle with me. If, if people of privilege didn't grasp it with a death grip of insecurity for fear that, that they lose out on being able to serve themselves with it or leverage the involvement of people who appreciate their privilege, but instead they utilize their access to privilege to empower others to thrive within their identities and destinies, that would be a pretty amazing culture, <laughs> right? I think so. Good news. This is the culture that I belong to, and I want to serve to nurture its reality so that every single person within it thrives. This isn't going to hurt my business at all. It's going to do very well. There's going to be some difficulty, true. But opposition and suffering didn't hold Jesus back from diving headlong into the culture of humanity, and he accomplished everything of his destiny perfectly. Not one thing left in his vision of responsibility. I, I've already experienced two years of extreme opposition and difficulty in pursuing this vision. And it's been from the guy in the mirror named Elijah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sorry it's taken me this long to become willing to do what I know I want to. I've robbed myself of two years of joy in the journey of my destiny. But there's no shame in me for this. Jesus wrestled with becoming willing to do what he knew he wanted to as well. He gifts me with perfectly empathetic understanding without allowing me the luxury of pathetic excuses. <laughs> Lots of people have told me, this isn't going to go well for you. You know that, right? Like, Jesus was a nice guy and they killed him too, bro. no. No, <laughs> he laid his life down as, as a big difference, trying to escape suffering and adversity to preserve your life is the surest way forward into tyranny because there's always someone out there who's willing to sell you a comfortable life for the price of your freedom. Jesus knew that coming to earth was going to get him killed. That's why he came. That was the vision. <laughs> this is the very heart of entrepreneurialism. People compelled by innovative vision that birth solutions within impossible situations and are willing to kill themselves to make it happen. <laughs> Dying to live is the insatiable longing for transformed life beyond the current reality, and it's the way into it as well. If you're not willing to kill yourself for your vision, don't pursue it. It's not a vision. It's just an aspiration. And your vision is going to die as soon as it requires perspiration to pursue. Killing yourself to birth innovative solutions that cause other people to thrive. Hear what I'm saying. Killing yourself to birth innovative solutions that cause other people to thrive is way different than trying to take the resource of other people's lives to make your agenda a reality. The first is the pursuit of freedom and the second is a system of slavery. Now, personally, <laughs> I believe that freedom is way better than slavery. And I know that there are a ton of people that resonate with this cultural value. Here's the good news. The only two kinds of people in the world 
you know the pattern. <laughs> those who resonate with freedom and those who will. <laughs> that gives me a lot of hope. A pool of opportunity, 8 billion people wide and growing presents very advantageous probability for multiplied success and thriving. Friends, reputation is what people think is true about you. Character is the reality of integrity embodied in action. Those who gave me input were absolutely right. My vision has led to the death of my reputation. My reputation's mine to lay down and I will kill it to make this vision a reality. <laughs> Nobody has killed my reputation though. You're free from guilt. I'm willing to lay it down to live out of the character of the best man that I've ever known and to invite you into everything that belongs to us. I'm sorry that I've been living off brand and misrepresenting the culture that I belong to. I belong within an integrated community of courageous pioneers, innovating solutions to overcome the impossible and establish thriving within new frontiers. It's a powerful community, and I'm so proud to be a part of Bozeman. It's heaven on earth, friends. Glad to be a part of the joy and the journey together. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.